Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, oh, we got some sovereign citizens. I have to say thank you to people in court and Tommy V in Michigan. I poached your clips. Back in the day, there was just me, maybe Artie, Schrodinger, a few others to hold off the sovereign citizen sore, the, the, uh, the sovereign citizen offensive. <laughs> But now we've got lots of help, lots of help. So today we're going to sort it out. We're going to sort it out. We're going to go back to back. We're going to say, figure out who's crazier. I've seen most of most, most, both clips. I haven't decided yet. I really haven't. We've got uh, the one, according to the title, is a ninja. Then we've got another guy who rolls around with a feather in his head. Does not appear to be Native American. <laughs> But who knows? Who knows? Of course, you, you know, he could identify as a stapler. Who? Who knows? Who knows? It doesn't matter. Welcome to Law Talk with Mike. Often imitated, never duplicated. Where you will not learn anything, but it's guaranteed to get worse. Let's do it, shall we? Um, I was just... I haven't been over to the complex since I moved out, except for once when I went over a week before the 28th, roughly, to bum some weed off a neighbor and pick raspberries that I helped planted years ago. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, <clears throat> I am the agent authorized to represent Peyton Ansley John Milton. So are you Peyton Ansley John Milton? you don't know it's it's my understanding that i'm not allowed to answer that question directly <laughs> your honor okay well that's that's a misunderstanding uh um so it looks like ms langley's your attorney at least in one of these cases negative i'm uh i'm pro se actually. okay well then if you're pro se i think so means you're representing yourself right. which makes must make you peyton ansley milton because negative. someone pro se is uh, representing themselves mm. I'm not allowed to confirm or deny that from what I understand, Your Honor. Nope. Why are you here? <laughs> to, to represent myself. Okay. I understand. <laughs> you see how that's an admission that you are you, right? Okay. Hang on just a second. Here. Ms. Langley, I'll be with you in a second here. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to take a seat. Okay. Before we get started, I'm going to talk for a minute. All right. Absolutely. So Peyton Milton, you kind of we kind of went round and round with each other about whether you are or whether you aren't Peyton Milton. I can only include that you are Peyton uh, Milton simply because at some point you said you're here to represent yourself. Peyton Milton is the person charged. So if you're here representing yourself, you must be representing Peyton Milton. You must be Peyton Milton. And well, so, so I'm not sure. done talking. Yet. Absolutely. And so um, just in looking things here. Um, Peyton Milton has a few issues going on. For one, he's got a warrant, um, a felony warrant out of Skagit, Skagit County Superior Court for an animal cruelty charge. He needs to take care of that. He's also got a DUI out of uh, Thurston County District Court. And um, I'm going to tell you whether or not a court date has been set for that or not. This really reminds me of that old Judge Hurley video when they start referring to him as in the third person, like he's like it's not him. The judge doesn't know he doesn't even know where to go with it. He is good in this. It's a lot of fun. At the moment, uh, um, no court hearing has been set on that. Um, Peyton Milton on April 11th was in front, which is just a few days ago. Um, well, I guess maybe a little over a week ago now, about two weeks ago now, 
uh, was in front of the court. He was released, and um, Thurston County Public Defense was was appointed. Um, that can change if you wish to represent yourself uh, um, or not. Um, that's fine one way or the other. And then there's this case, which might actually be the least of your worries. It's a criminal trespass, but the least of Peyton Milton's uh, uh, worries. There's a criminal trespass out of the city of Lacey. It was alleged to have occurred on March 31st. Uh, bail's been posted. And uh, this is what's known as a pretrial. Pre-trial, it's the opportunity to resolve the case short of trial. A lot of times someone's represented by an attorney. They'll speak with the prosecuting attorney. Someone's represented by, a uh, someone represents himself. They can speak to the, uh, speak with the prosecuting attorney to resolve the case somehow. If the case doesn't resolve, then the case gets set for trial. And then there'll be a jury trial. And then the, um, uh, then a jury will determine whether, uh, Thank you, People in Court. This is from People in Court's channel. If you want to see it without me talking over it, he's got – or she – he does. they've got lots of good stuff. I don't know if People in Court's a man or a woman. <laughs> but but thank you. Go over there and give them some love. Person accused, Peyton Milton, they met at a threshold uh, place. They may determine whether you – if whoever, depending on who shows up – whether that person is Peyton Milton uh, um, or not, and then the jury will decide one way or the other as to whether um, you found guilty um, or not guilty of the crime charged. So um, that's where we're at. And if uh, um, you know, you're know you here, um, again, you said you're representing yourself, and if you want to resolve the case here, we, I'll give you a chance to speak with the, the city. If not, we're going to set it on the tri trial track, and uh, we're going to set it to the last known Peyton Milton's address. And if, Peyton, if you show up and represent yourself as Peyton Milton at the trial, which you certainly have a right to do, a jury will determine one way or the other as whether or not you're guilty or not guilty of. It, it doesn't go there, but it it does make you think of uh, David Hall, and y yeah, you just expect the judge at some point to say if you see if you see Peyton Milton, uh, you know, tell him he's he's not leaving jail either. Uh, criminal trespass. I will sell you, tell you in a minute where the notice, it's important that you get it, where the notice that you, for your, the DUI um, is charged, when, make sure, make sure you get that. It's going to be important that, that you get that. Thank you. So in terms of whether, well, I don't have to answer that question. People in court is a she, I'm, I, I'm told. So go over there and support her. Link to the channel and this video in the description below. Or not, I mean, that's not. I'll, I will tell you that's not getting you anywhere, and so it's just not. And so I guess we, what I want to know from you is where we're going to go for this case today. Is this case going to resolve today, or does it need to be set for trial? Well, I am looking towards a resolution. Unfortunately, I have not been able to contact Matthew Sharp as okay. of yet, despite. Oh boy, I didn't notice this. We, we have a man bun alert. Reaching out to him, um, I have some ex exhibition lists here to. Uh, Put in. Uh, okay, so just, just okay, don't you don't need to raise your voice. You can just sure. so. Just um, really bipolar bear. Is it is that a serious question? I don't think it is. But it, <laughs> if it is, uh, the reason I make fun of them is because they're funny as hell. The in terms of <laughs> their exhibits, not exhibitions, uh, but exhibits. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, those are for trial. If you want to convince the jury, and so if you want, if you if you're of the position, you didn't. Um, you know, give you an opportunity to speak with them now. We can step out, go off the record, and if you can resolve the case here now, that's fine. If not, then we'll tee it up for jury trial and go from there. You can stay seated. Okay. You don't need to get up. Yeah, must and be. so, Mr. Schbutt, I am also going to hear from him. I'm not going to force him into doing anything he doesn't want to. Absolutely. So, Mr. Sharp, uh, uh, what's your position on all of this? Okay, well, a few things. Um, you know, I'd point out. At the first hearing, Mr. Miller was held on bail, and he also shared um, at the time that he wanted access to a computer to work on his defense. And yeah. so actually put a lot of time in thinking how to make that happen and mm. put a discovery packet together and then found out that he was able to post the bail. So um, I've got the discovery to deliver to Mr. Mil Mr. Peyton Milton if that's who this is, and he'll take it. Um, we've printed off everything that can be printed off. There were a few things that are this prosecutor is super nice and very reasonable. Yeah, I mean, he is trying to be accommodating. For video, you can't print a video, of course, so they're on a USB drive, okay. hopefully in a universal of enough of a format. Um, and being out, I, I trust that Mr. Milton can now access a computer to do what he's got to do with that. 
Uh, well, again, I'm going to I'm going to stop you there for a second uh, because I didn't realize where we were on discovery, and um, he can give that to you, but you, this is where you do got to admit you're Peyton Milton because he's got a responsibility to give that either to the defendant or the defendant's attorney, and uh, um, I I could. But that's not what I'm choosing to do here. And if you if you want that discovery right now, you again, then you do have to agree that you're Peyton Milton. Well, I am the agent authorized to represent him. No, that's that not that's that's the, again. You're not. You, okay, look. <laughs> look um, again. I have. Okay, stop. Uh, what, stop. Sure, sure. Stop. Okay. Sure. So, uh, um, respect you. Your thank you. <laughs> Being the agent for Peyton Milton isn't good enough unless you're a practicing unless you're an attorney with a bar number. Mm -hmm. Then you can represent Peyton Milton. You're either Peyton Milton representing yourself or a third person representing Peyton Milton, which you can get the discovery. If you're if you're a third person representing uh, not Peyton Milton representing Peyton Milton, then you don't unless you're an attorney, then you don't get discovery. So that's where we're at. Well, unfortunately, Your Honor, if it, that's that's a rough one. I am a layman as I claim to be, and mm -hmm. as a layman, I'm not made to understand the law as yourself, do often Your Honor, and Matthew Sharp over here as an attorney who has passed the bar, then I'm not really certain uh, where to proceed as a... Right, you don't know the law, and yet you choose to represent yourself. This, this is the whole point, and this is why I make fun of them. As being in front of your capacity as a neutral arbiter, this is... Uh, I'm simply here to put in the exhibit list for who is known as Peyton Ansley John Milton in all capital letters on the court docket in front of you so that my <coughs> bail would not be revoked and uh, I would have to be incarcerated and refuse my reasonable accommodations to defend myself pro se as the agent authorized to represent Peyton Ansley John Milton in all capital letters. Good city honor. Uh, I'll point out, last time... I was at a hearing with Mr. Milton. We were working on just these two cases with Lacey. So there, there's a second one with Lacey, Your Honor, if you didn't catch up. There's a assault case that's on a stipulated order of continuance from, yes. from just a, a month or two ago. But since then... Did he have an attorney on that? No. Okay. That, that was Well, Ms. Langley was originally. She's no longer. Okay, but did she sign off on that? All right, Bipolar. Uh, I, I, I announced at the beginning there would be no learning, number one. Number two, you don't know what an ad hominem attack is. I'm attacking the decision they made on substance. But it, it has been fun playing with you. That, on that agreement? Yeah, I think Was you're she representing for the resolution. <laughs> yes. <sir>. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Was that, and so, and you agree that you entered that resolution? March 22nd. Are you speaking with me or Matt? Yes. Um, I have paperwork here that has no signatures from anybody in regards to the simple assault right. and the SOC. I've just re acquired that today, as a matter of fact. So, so all that's coming as news to you? That's a good question. Um, I do know that I have a motion here to suppress an SOC dated on 322. The judge is cracking me up in this one. Um, signed under duress of life, liberty, and freedom being threatened without just cause. So, Your Honor, I'm sorry, I was in the middle of the thought there. Since that all happened, now there are the state charges, too, and that's maybe more serious, the DUI and the obstructing charge. And I understand counsel was appointed there. Maybe I'm mistaken. It might be shaggy. The docket says. It does say that. So I was going to suggest the court inquire with Mr. Milton again because it's more complex now. With state cases involved, the stakes are higher for sure. Um, whether he still wants to proceed pro se, I mean, I'm hearing, you know, the the disadvantage of being pro se is real. Um, but if there's counsel on the state case, maybe that's an option here. Also, standby counsel may be a beneficial option. I, I There was some obvious friction with Ms. Langley, but she's not the only attorney available. Right. <laughs> What's too alleged to have happened in this criminal trespass? I'm just curious. Allegations. Uh, being on the premises at a convenience store. At where? When when he'd been trespassed? That's the allegedly. These are just allegations. Yeah, absolutely.
Do you wish to represent yourself? Uh, as the agent authorized to represent Peyton Ansley John Milton, that is correct, sir. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Okay. If you ever, um, you, and you're not a lawyer. Well, obviously. Did you pass the bar, so the bar exam in Washington State? We're waiting. Do you understand why I'm asking these questions? Uh, as a layman, I'm not meant to, but no. as the agent authorized to represent myself, I do. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to explain it to you anyway. I appreciate that. You have, you have the right to represent yourself. Right. And, um, and so you, but everybody also has a right to be represented by an attorney. And if you can't afford an attorney, I can appoint an attorney to represent you, either Ms. Langley or, again, if that doesn't work, there is, she's not the only attorney on contract. The concern is, is when... Um, uh, well, you know, we, we don't actually decide innocence or guilt. This isn't a, this isn't a jury here. This is a chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, if yeah. someone goes to trial without an attorney, then get convicted, then on appeal they can say, oh, I wasn't effectively represented because I chose to represent myself. As a judge, I'm required to ask a few questions just to make sure that you're going into this um, uh, process with your eyes open and you understand fully what's at risk. That's why I'm asking. I'm just putting on the record to say whether you're a lawyer or not. I understand that, okay. and so And so again, I'll, I'll ask it again. Uh, um, I understand that I'm at a huge deficit here okay. representing myself, okay. Prose. Great. And so, um, but the answer to the question is you're not a lawyer. You're, you're. As a layman, I'm not meant to understand the law in the same manner as you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so as a layman, so I, when you say as a layman, I'm going to take that to mean that you're not a lawyer and did not pass the bar exam. That is that fair? That would have to be true okay. as a neutral arbiter no. in your position. Nothing necessarily has to be true. Mm. And so, and you had already said, you understand that you'll be at a, at a di uh, disadvantage. And then Mr. Sharp is an attorney. Uh, um, he knows the rules of um, you know, procedure, rules of evidence. And uh, whereas you might not be as well acquainted with those as he is. You agree with that? Yes. Okay. I would feel foolish disagreeing with that. Okay. And then have you, have you ever conducted a trial before? No, I'm a, uh... I'm excited for the experience. Why? I'm sick with it, Your Honor, to put it in uh, Western Pacific Northwest slang terms. I don't, I don't understand that answer. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a kung fu teacher internationally, and I have a, an but... interest in law on the side. Uh, I'm a kung fu teacher internationally and I have a an interest in law on the side. Ah, uh, there we go. My my passport that was stolen from me uh the same night that I was under arrest Kung for the Fu first stop sit. This just gets better. I missed that part. Fantastic. Another tip of the cat to people to cap to people in court. Oh, that is being brought up today concerned me because the same day I was uh, neglected having somebody who had broken the law against me search from the same officer that arrested me for defending a senior citizen, which uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I regret to, uh, to digress or inform that I'm not a criminal, you know. I'm, I'm really just going through this because I have faith in the system that if I'm not doing anything against the community standard that should be being held up by people in the position of level zero government, sovereign, citizen officials, um, there should be no reason why I wouldn't be allowed to offer witness and testimony from my exhibit list to clear my name of this criminal trespassing in the first degree to hopefully clear off this simple assault charge that I went out on a leap of faith that my justice system would take care of me um, in, in defending it. Does that, does that answer the question? It, it doesn't. No, I just Because let me, let me, let me, here, here's, here's my. It doesn't. <laughs> I love it. My perspective on this, and we'll, we'll get through this here right? um, pretty quickly, because I have an idea of what's going to happen here today. Um, 
Well, first of all, let me let me back up a little bit. Are you aware that Peyton Milton had a warrant, a felony warrant out of Skagit County? I've never been officially made aware of this okay. by any. Consider yourself make aware of it now. You sure. have that warrant. Sure. You need to take care of that. Yes. Um, and uh, here's the thing. So criminal trespass in the grand scheme of things, that's far from the most serious type of offense we, we um, see around here. DUI is a little bit more serious. That carries with it some fairly more harsh consequences, I guess, is the way it is. The way it is. And most people, you have said yourself a couple of times, well, as a layman, I'm really not familiar with the, with the court. Most people, pretty much all people in your situation, when they come in a situation where they're not familiar how things work and uh, um, lay people who aren't uh, as sophisticated or understanding the rules of evidence and sophisticated in their knowledge, you might be very sophisticated, but sophisticated knowledge or awareness of the rules of evidence, rules oh, of isn't. criminal procedure and so forth. He isn't sophisticated in any way whatsoever, but 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 <laughs> that, that was a nice way to soften it, Judge. You know, when they get the opportunity to get an attorney, they jump at it because this attorney's been through here on a daily basis. And just let me finish, please. I let you finish. So let me. And so they want to take advantage of uh, um, the expertise of that attorney. And again, the attorneys who are public defense, they're here every day. They may not seem like it, but they seen just about everything under the sun, including this, you know, the routine about red agents and on their behalf and all that sort of stuff. This isn't news to me, Mr. Sharp, or anyone else who may be appointed to represent you. I've yet to see it be successful, though. Who knows? You might be the first. I doubt it. But anyway, most people take advantage of that. But you do have the right to represent yourself if, if you wish to do that. Based on, you know, comments that you have made combined with what Mr. Sharp has, um, has said, and that you're here, made the comment that you um, are here to represent yourself. Um, I am going to make a finding that you are um, Peyton Ansley, have gone by the name Peyton Ansley John Milton. You were the person who was arrested on this and posted bail and are now here. And in that respect, you can provide him the discovery that's available. You can give him right now. Okay. I don't see Mr. Sharp, unless you disagree with me, based on everything I've seen thus far, I tend to doubt any sort of resolution is going to be reached here today. And so I would just be inclined to set this for trial, and then uh, we'll go from there. And if you change your mind about an attorney, uh, um, you, can, you can do that. So the okay. address we have for Peyton Milton. And mail needs to be set on that. Again, that DUI, you shouldn't ignore. Oh, absolutely. Good, go, don't go to sleep on that DUI. And again, I don't know what happened in Skagit County. I can look here in a minute. But um, notice on that DUI is going to be sent to um, that address. Pretty, are we pretty sure Peyton's going to get it? 5213. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> There's no excuses that could be articulated that he would not receive that piece of mail. Um, Good to hear. Does like he have a cell phone that we can send text reminders to? Whatever. Your Honor, <laughs> well, I can't say no to that. I do have to <clears throat> express that all my physical possessions, or all of Peyton Hans and John Milton's physical possessions, were stolen from him on 316 for the original arrest. Uh -huh. Well, okay, then if you don't have one, you don't have one. Not everyone does. Well, I do have access to the phone number, as it is through an application. But right. mail would work a whole lot better. Well, we would do both. Perfect. But before you go, last thing I'm going to do, just to let you know, mm. uh, um, looks like charges were filed. The affidavit of probable cause was filed on March 2nd, 2022. There's been no... Um, March 2nd. ...of 2022, over a year ago. Oh, and um, there was a declaration of mailing on March 27th. Uh, there was a motion hearing on March 20th. There was a declaration of mailing on March 7th. Now, was that mail? Hey, let me finish, sent. please. I don't know where it was sent. That's okay. Skagit County Superior Court. I can't say it. Gotcha. So, but I will say that on um, March 7th, there was a declaration of mailing. On March 22nd, a motion hearing was held and a warrant was issued. So that warrant's been out for a little over a year. Mm. So you need to pay it. That's a felony. 
No. To have a warrant out for no. a year. No, gotcha. it's, gotcha. it's a charge out of superior court, which gotcha. makes it a felony. Right. It's animal cruelty in the first degree. And I don't know anything about it other than that. Yeah, you got an outstanding felony warrant, you scumbag. And with that, Mr. Sharp, unless you have any other comment, that'll conclude today's hearing. I'd just like to clarify for Mr. Milton's benefit, he decides that he would like to work with an attorney. I understand that the process would be call the court and ask just for a hearing to be reviewed for appointment at any time. Um, it would need to be scheduled, and it would probably take a little while to, I think, schedule probably a couple weeks out. But, Mr. Milton, if you decide you want to do that, that would be the way. Just call the court and ask for it. May I uh, um, please approach and disperse these uh, exhibit lists? Well, you can, you can give it to – if Mr. Sharp will accept it, sir, you can give it to him. May I give you this comment? I mean, we don't – is there case number is a copy, so I'll, I'll point out that an attorney would know the proper way to do this and whether to file it concurrently with the court or not. This I looks on my way to your <laughs> like a an smile. Uh, I have three originals technically here. These are things an attorney would know. Uh -huh. But they all have the same. Thank you. Mr. Sharp, does he have your contact information? Um, do you want to kind of leave the phone number? Thank you. Would, would you like this for your book? Um, then I'll take it. Yeah, we go. So if it's the same thing, is this identical to what you got, Mr. Sharp? I didn't get it examined for. I didn't get a look at it for that, Your Honor, but I can check the court file later to verify. Appreciate that. I'll receive whatever this is right now. Forgive are these me, okay? Are numbers. these witnesses? Are these witnesses you <laughs> wish to call? Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> these are uh, witnesses who have. A this is the this is the judge that got Shaggy in the witness list, isn't it? Agreed to uh, provide witness or. <laughs> and or testimony, uh, whether it be written or okay. appearing before the court. Do you know how to get those witnesses in front of the court? I have already made contact with <laughs> and gotten her to uh, to agree that she would be willing to testify or okay. provide and testimony. Again, I was a yes or no question. Yes. Okay. The answer is yes. I don't um, think on, you do because you need to do more at than least that. two. I've, I've made contact with two out of the six. Um, one of them is the arresting officer um, that I want uh, to testify. I'm for. reasonably confident that the city will uh, support Precisely. Him. Precisely. So. So, and again, I'm not going to. I guess I know I said this was over, but. Um, mm. I, I'm going to try one more time here. Um, You know, that's not enough to get a witness in front of the court just to go talk to him and say, hey, would you mind showing up? And if they say, yeah, that, that doesn't do it. Right. That's why I'm uh, preparing witness and testimony, uh, written, signed statements. Yeah, dated. That's, you're not going to be able to give written testimony. Uh, if, that, no, someone, if you just ask someone and they day. choose not to show up, right. you, can't, you can't give a written statement. Precisely. So I'll have to get written statements, signed, dated, and then have them show up as witnesses. Is yeah, that correct? But... but yeah, but there's a process to, to to get them to show up. Okay. And you and you don't you clearly don't know what that is. I believe I've begun it effectively and properly. All right. Um, you know, and I and I can't. I'm probably Mr. Sharp's over there thinking there. I've gone too far already. I can't be the one to tell you how to do it because that's I can't sit there and tell him what to do. You don't want me to do that. I can't sit there and tell you what to do or the defense attorney, and that wouldn't be fair either. And yeah, so we'll have to get together before the next court. They can't you know, he doesn't have to do that. Oh, uh, and hang on. Just, just sure. you're talking to me. Sure. I'm talking right now. Absolutely. Right? And so when you prepare witnesses and, and get them into court, there's there's a way you, you know, any defense attorney would know how to do. And you clearly don't. And so I just. I'm just telling you this, just so you hope you go into this with with, with open eyes. And uh, um, so I get I get a I have a feeling I'm I'm picking up that you know, and I and I'm sorry for being blunt. Is you you really don't know, you know. And again, this is criminal trespass, which again is not the end of the world. You really don't know what you're doing. You really don't. And uh, um, I think it would be to your great benefit to have someone with you who actually does. And that's and that and that's as far as I'm going to go with. It. And again, the opportunity is right now. We could still appoint someone. Mr. Sharp has said, and I agree with him. If you want to contact the court and get an attorney, but 
um, one was been appointed in that in that DUI, and I don't know whether you're going to reject her or not either. But uh, right, as of right now, you have an attorney in that DUI, and you'd be doing yourself a huge disservice if you approach that case the same way you're approaching this one. Which I again, that. which I again, I maybe I'm going too far in saying that, but. Uh, um, I appreciate your expertise. Yeah, I've seen a few. I've been I've been at this for a few years there, Mr. Milton, and I've seen a few people represent themselves, and I don't know that I've ever seen it go well. What's With that, and that's going to be my last comment on this. If you'll conclude the hearing, you're free to go. Thank and you. Then your keep honor. your eye on the mail. We'll see you back here at the next. I don't see any point in a pretrial. We'll just set up for a trial. No, okay. If you think Kung Fu Soft Sit is bad. Wait till you see old Featherhead here. It, 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 it's, it's really a good question. Who's crazier? Both parties? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, good morning, sir. What's your name? Peter Sorowski. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Sorowski. My court clerk tells me that the defendant checked in today. We're going to go find him. The court officer is going to go look for him now. This one's from Tommy V in Michigan. Go show him some love. Also, the link to the video and to his channel in the description below. Also, Rocky Lennon gave me the, the very cool uh, intro to this. <laughs> Good morning, sir. What is your name? Good morning. My name is Jamal Cole. Okay, thank you. Um, can I have you both raise your right hand? Do you both swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You can lower your hands. Okay, this is a complaint for non-payment of rent. Um, have the parties spoken? Have you talked? to try to resolve this? And, um, before we proceed with the hearing, I'd like to establish that the actual, the contract is actually under California law. The 36th District Court does not have jurisdiction over said contract. And furthermore, the plaintiff here has not a D. Go tell Anise Bryant she doesn't have jurisdiction. I double dog dare you. Just try it. He's on file and has not have proof that he has not been compliant. With laws and mission, that's the only discussion. Who told you that the court doesn't have jurisdiction over the contract, sir? No, it's under governing California law. The house is in Detroit. Yes. Is the house in Detroit? Yes. So the okay. The court has jurisdiction. The contract itself is under California law, so that's true. Okay. Um, Mr. Sorowski, do you have a deed? Yes. Can you give it to the court officer? Thank you. Mr. Sorowski, is there um, some paragraph in the contract that says that this is to be interpreted by California law? No. Mr. Crow, where are you getting this California law from? When you look at the actual contract itself, they'll actually say that the governing law is California. Or the second to last one. I don't even know why that would be in a contract. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it may say that. Oh, it does. It says this agreement is to be governed under the laws located in the state of California. Why would Why would you all agree to that? <laughs> okay, well, whatever the case, the property is in the city of Detroit. And so the this is the place to file any kind of, um, you know, eviction action. All right. Um, Mr. Sorowski just presented the court with a deed that um,
conveys the property commonly known as the city of Detroit to Mr. Sarowski. This was signed on March 5th, 2021. Did you record this, sir? Did you yeah. record this at the Wayne County Register of Deeds? Yes. Okay, this one is not recorded. But do you did you actually take this to the Wayne County Register of Deeds or take a copy to the Wayne County Register yeah, of Deeds? All right, so um, did you live in California at some point? I did, yes. Oh, okay, because there's a lot of California stuff on here, so I was just wondering. All right, so um, how much is old in rent? Um, 1500 So rent is 750 per month? Correct. Mr. Crow, what do you have to say in response to that? I have the actual evidence here that showed that he was not in compliant with the actual agreement. Or the actual, or or even having the property as home or compliance. So the whole concept itself. Is what evidence do you have, sir? Have you showed it to him? Show it to him before you give it to the court officer. Show it to Mr. Sarasa. We're not compliant with Michigan law. This is the address here. If I'm on the bank correctly, this is the same address five three five one Heaven Street. All right. Just show it to him. I don't need you to examine them. Just show it. Show him the paperwork. Yes. Sir, have you spoken to a defense attorney today, by the way? Thank you. Sir, do you have, when I say, I'm calling everybody, sir. Mr. Sarowski, do you have a certificate of compliance from the city of Detroit? No. All right, um, Mr. Crow, why haven't you paid your rent? Did you hear me, sir? Yeah, just take a deep breath and relax. Is there a reason why you haven't been paying the rent? So you think you can just stay in the house without paying rent? I'm sorry? Do you think you can stay in the house without paying rent? First I've seen. You know what? I'm going to pass on this matter so Mr. Crow can get himself together. Have a seat, sir. And as a matter of fact, you may want to go speak to a defense attorney. Go to room 417, please. Um, would you like to speak to a defense counsel? No, I don't need to. All right, well, do you have yourself together? Because every time I ask you a question, there's like a, a delayed response. Is everything okay with you, sir? Do you want to proceed now, or do you need to get yourself together? Well, actually, I would like to... As long as everything is established that I spoke for before and proceeded, I'm good to proceed. Okay, well, you can say what you want to say, sir. I just need to know. So are you putting the rent in escrow? Did you hear what I said, sir? You know what? I don't have time for this, sir. If you have an issue, you need to step outside and get yourself together. I'm going to recall the matter so Mr. Crow can get himself together. I'll call this when we come off of break. Please go into the hallway or sit in the gallery so you can get yourself together, sir. Well, I keep asking you questions and you're not responding to me. I'm trying to move this case forward, but you're not saying anything when I ask you questions. 
And so that's telling me that something is wrong. Okay. You need to speak up, please, for the court reporter. All right. So, and that's cool. If you need to do that, just tell me. Like, when I ask you a question, how much time do you need to, to breathe? Because we've been up here for a while. All right. You know what? I'm going to pass on this matter. Please go to room 417 to speak to a defense attorney. Okay. Mr. Sorowski, I'll recall the matter when we come back. Room 417, sir. I'm sorry. You refuse a defense attorney? Okay. All right. Um, I'm passing on the matter anyway. Have a seat, please. Thank you. There you go. All right, so the last case that I have is the trial. I do have a recall. I'm going to recall that first, and then we will go to the trial. Recall in case number 23-350520. This is Peter Zorowski versus Jamel Crowell of the city of Detroit. This is a recall of a pretrial on a complaint for non-payment of rent. Going to have the parties uh, come forward on this matter. All right, we're waiting on the defendant to come in on this one. We're off the record. Attorney. No longer here. It's clear I got somebody going to check the restroom right now, but other than that. I just, I mean, he was literally staring at me. So, um, Mr. Sorowski, I'm sure you have somewhere to be at some point. Um, are you in communication with the defendant? Not any longer. Okay. Would you like me to stay here? Um, you can sit down. I'm, I, we're trying. We're looking for him. Nothing. Hmm. Did he tell you that he had to go somewhere or? All right, I'm recalling it. Recalling case number 23350520, Peter Sorowski versus Jamel Crowell in the city of Detroit. This is a recall of a complaint for non-payment of rent. The matter is uh, set for pretrial. Um, sorry, can I have your name one more time? Peter Sorowski. Thank you uh, for your patience today, Mr. Sorowski. The court notes that the defendant was present. I just saw him up to maybe about 15 minutes ago. Um, this matter was scheduled for 9.30 30 uh the court called the matter maybe about an hour ago i'm not exactly sure um the defendant was present uh the defendant placed his name on the record the defendant also um took an oath to give um truthful testimony and um when the court 
um, gave the defendant an opportunity to refute the plaintiff's statements as to rent that was owed. Um, the defendant did present a screenshot of, it looks like, the city of Detroit's rental map website, which shows properties that are in compliance or not in compliance with the city of Detroit uh, rental ordinance, which does require that property be registered and um, that the owner have a certificate of compliance in order to place someone in the property and to collect rent. Um, when I asked Mr. Crowell if he placed the rent in escrow, instead of answering me, he started to breathe deeply and stare at me. Um, and so I asked Mr. Crowell if he needed a moment to, you know, gather himself. You know, sometimes people get nervous or whatever. Um, he kept saying that he did not need a moment, but every time I asked him a question, he would start breathing deeply and stare at me. And so. Um, I passed on the matter to allow him to gather his thoughts. Uh, I just recall the matter. He is not here. I will state um, that in response to, um, you know, Mr. Crowell's legal defense that the plaintiff is not um, in compliance with the city's rental ordinance, um, there's a section of the ordinance that required, oh, I'll just read it. It says, notwithstanding section 8-15-35D of this code and subject to subsections E and F of this section, it shall be unlawful for an owner to allow any unoccupied rental property to be occupied or to collect rent from a tenant for occupancy of a rental property during or for any time in which there is not a valid certificate of compliance for the rental property. Um, it then goes on to say that tenants of an occupied rental property that lacks a certificate of compliance shall pay the rent that would otherwise have been due into an escrow account, which is established by the Buildings Safety Engineering and Environmental Department with the third party financial institution. If the owner of the rental property obtains a certificate of compliance within the, within the first 90 days in which payments are made into the escrow account, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid to the owner less the actual administrative fee charged by the third party financial institution. Um, and then it says if the owner fails to obtain a certificate of compliance within those first 90 days, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid at the end of those 90 days to the tenant, less the actual administrative fee charged by the third party financial institution. Uh, the, the ordinance goes on and on. Um, basically what this is, is there is an obligation, uh, sir, as a landlord upon you, to uh, get your property registered and to obtain a certificate of compliance with the city of Detroit. Um, you are not supposed to place anyone in your house until you've done that and you are not supposed to collect rent from anyone until you've done that. Um, but the ordinance also requires the tenants, um, if they learn that the property lacks the certificate of compliance, the ordinance as I interpret it requires the tenants to place the rental amount into um, an escrow account. I do think I asked Mr. Crowell if he had done that, and that's when I did not receive a response. Um, and so the court, I wish he was here so that I could uh, question him again. Mr. Sarowski, are you aware of the tenant paying the uh, rental amount into an escrow account? Okay. So I'm going to enter a judgment. Um, so you said the rent was $1,500. How much in court costs? Let me see. I know you probably paid, what, $55 to file this? Only what's available cost. Oh, um, 55 plus 35. Okay. So that takes us to $1,590. So the court is going to enter a default judgment because I did pass on this matter and I don't know where the defendant went. And Oh, wait, here he comes. Okay. Sir, can you come step to the podium? You're just in time. Hello again, sir. Can you state your name? Okay, Mr. Crowell, you are still under oath. You were sworn before. 
All right, um, Mr. Crowell, I just went through this whole thing, but I'll go through it again. So you raised the defense as to why you have not paid the rent in the past two months. You stated that um, the property uh, does not have a certificate of compliance, correct? Actually, um, that is part of it. Part of, and also I want to, as well, um, establish that Pegasus District Court does not have subject matter jurisdiction. Also that I have been I have been scammed. Uh, I'm also on the court and the rest. And I want to also make sure that it's stated in the record. Indeed. Were you finished? Okay. Because there is no subject matter jurisdiction that was established, I do not apply, and I'm not raising any of my rights as well. Okay, well, um, that is your assertion. Uh, the court does have jurisdiction, though. Um, this court has jurisdiction over property that is located within the city of Detroit. Um, do you live in the city of Detroit, sir? That's a yes or no question. Do you live in the city of Detroit? Okay, I um I'm working with you because I understand, you know, sometimes people get nervous or excited or whatever and they have to take deep breaths. I encourage my children to do it all the time, but I need some kind of indication from you that you're going to respond to my questions. If not, I'm just going to proceed as you being non-responsive. So do you live in the city of Detroit? I also like to assert that. Uh, Michigan court rules are now being followed at this moment. In the record, I would like to establish that. Okay, so you're not going to respond to my questions. I'll note that, that you're not responsive. Um, but the sum is... So the sum is in complaint indicate that the property is located within the city of Detroit, and so does the rental map that you submitted to the court. Okay. I guess also established here as far as the contract that this is that this whole case is established under is under California law. Sir, you were living in the house and rent is owed. Whether this contract says it's California law or um, Michigan law or whatever. You you are in Michigan. The house is in Michigan. The house is in Detroit. You've been living in the house. You owe rent. Now, I am aware of your defense that the property is not um, in compliance. And as I stated before, I'll read to you what I just read on the record before you came back into the courtroom. I think I asked you if you were placing the rent into escrow. I need to know, have you been placing the rent into escrow? I have been scammed. So that is why rent has not been paid. How were you scammed, sir? Because the rental agreement is from another state. And the state in which the rental agreement is actually exercised in is different than the state of the governing law. That's not germane here. I mean, 
Um, you're under contract. You are under contract to pay rent. And so I guess I should ask you what, how would you like to see this case be resolved? I would like to the case, I demand the case be dismissed. Based on the fact that you entered into a contract that is, you're saying is to be interpreted under California law? Is that why? Because this, the face of this report does not have jurisdiction over California law or contracts that are in California. But 36 District Court does have jurisdiction over property that is located in the city of Detroit. And the property is located in the city of Detroit. And so you are living in this man's house, but you don't want to pay rent is what I'm gathering. Are you planning on moving out of the house? Okay, well, like I said before, so um, I just read section um, 8-15-82 of um, the Detroit City Code. And this is the portion of the ordinance that deals with registration of rental property. And I'm going to read you exactly what it says word for word. Uh, this is Section 8-15-82, subsection D. It says, notwithstanding Section 8-15-35D of this code and subject to subsections E and F of this section, it shall be unlawful for an owner to allow any unoccupied rental property to be occupied or to collect rent from a tenant for occupancy of a rental property during or for any time in which there is not valid certificate of compliance for the rental property. Tenants of an occupied rental property that lacks a certificate of compliance shall pay the rent that would otherwise have been due into an escrow account, which is established by the Building Safety Engineering and Environmental Department with a third-party financial institution. If the owner of the rental property obtains a certificate of compliance within the first 90 days in which payments are made into the escrow account, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid to the owner, less the actual administrative fee charged by the third-party financial institution. If the owner fails to obtain a certificate of compliance within those first 90 days, the rent in the escrow account shall be paid at the end of those 90 days to the tenant, less the actual administrative fee charged by the third-party financial institution. So. Uh, it says, thereafter, the tenant shall continue paying rent into the escrow account until the owner obtains a certificate of compliance. And this goes on and on and on. You can look up the ordinance on the website if you like. Um, but basically, what that means is, sir, although the plaintiff is under an obligation to obtain a certificate of compliance, you are also under an obligation. If he doesn't have the certificate of compliance, you are under an obligation to pay the amount of rent into the city's VC escrow. And that is why I asked you if you have been paying into the city's VC escrow. And even on this evidence that you submitted to the court, which is a screenshot of the rental map from the city of Detroit, um, I guess it's their, um, yeah, it's their rental map. Um, it shows the compliance status. It does show that this property located at is not in compliance. Does anybody anywhere on this planet believe that he's paid money into an escrow account? But there is a section. It, sh it shows that you could apply for a rental escrow program. Have you done that, sir? That's just a yes or no. Okay, again, I'm giving anymore. you an opportunity to get yourself together, but I'm taking that as non-responsive. Um, you haven't presented any evidence that you have paid into the escrow amount. And so, you know, your defense, in order to assert this defense, there's something, there's a condition uh, which you have to uh, combine, 
uh, abide by. And I don't see any evidence or haven't heard any evidence that you have abided by uh, the condition that is set forth by the um, Detroit Rental Registration Ordinance. Therefore, I am going to issue a judgment. Um, sir, how long do you need to get out of the property? Either pay the $1,590 or uh, vacate the property. The amount that was in the record on the $750. $750 per month, and he said you're two months behind, sir. You're right, you might be right. Do you have, do you have a ledger, Mr. Sorowski? No, the electronic means the electronic trail. Do you have your screenshots from your payments, sir? I was I was actually speaking to Mr. Crow. I was looking at him. You were looking down, but do you have um, your receipts for your payment? I don't think it's necessary. I think you can see to his assertion. Um, the fact that the contract is eight hundred dollars, but I know our verbal agreement was seven hundred. We said that earlier. That it's all, it's all good. Seven. Uh, so my question is. Okay, so I guess I didn't understand everything that he said, or I didn't hear maybe a part of what he said. Is it seven hundred per month as opposed to the seven fifty? Uh, yeah, that's correct. All right. Is the 700, what is old? Is it one month or two months? two months? Okay, I'm sorry. That's what I thought I heard. I thought he meant he only owed one month. Okay, so it's for 700. So then that takes the balance. Um, so it will be $1,400. That's for two months of rent plus $55 in court costs and $35 for the bailiff fee. That takes this to $1,490. That's on you, sir. So this is what I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time to either pay the amount or get out of the house. Okay? Um, now I'm asking you, before I enter the judgment, how much time do you need to get that money or move out? Wow. I hadn't seen all of this. This is this is wild. Okay. You said you weren't complying. I'll give you twenty one days, sir. Your Honor, yes. Uh, the property question is a duplex and the tenant in the other unit has expressed uh for safety to the safety of the tenant depending here. Apparently he's developing a drug habit. And he's feeling like this to be an extension for a sleep in the basement, uh, which has led to several face to face conversations. So, uh, just for the record, there's a summons, a complaint for non-payment of rent in the file, as well as a demand for possession for non-payment of rent that was issued to Mr. Crowell at 5351 Helen Street on June 3rd, 2023 by electronic service to the person in possession who consented in writing to such service at an email address that I'm not going to place on the record. Uh, there's also... Did you get, you didn't give him consent for that? Did he uh, uh, give you consent to serve him with the demand for possession by email? Sorry. Yeah, Do you have that? I need to see it. What? 
talk about it really. The most I have is Gabe Just a heads up, I sent you that thing. Thanks, man. Um, that meets the requirements of consent. That thing? Uh, Wait, you. we're back on the record. I'm sorry. Yeah. You you caught all that? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Madam Court Reporter. I don't know what happens here. Oh, my goodness gracious. Looks like the, the judge is going to say we don't have sufficient notice. Then you're screwed. Ah, these poor landlords try this. They don't know. They don't know what to do. It's a lot. It's basic stuff for an attorney, but it's a lot more complicated to a lay person than it appears. You sent it by email, though. Yes. My email. When did you mail it, sir? We reserved around the third or fourth. Did you receive it in the mail, sir? I don't know. He's not he's not functioning well. I don't know if that's his baseline or we're in an altered state here. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm finding that the notice was sufficient. Um so um There you go. There's a lease agreement in the file. I, I note that uh, I note defendant assertion that the lease agreement does not apply to this situation because it is under California law. There is something here in the um, in the uh, lease agreement that talks about California law. There are several references uh, in the lease agreement to California law. Um, this is a court of Michigan. This is a, this um, this is the 36th district court for the state of Michigan. So we interpret Michigan law here. However, there is a tenancy that was created. Um, the defendant does not object or deny that he lives at the home, and that yeah, I think he said that the rent was supposed to be seven hundred dollars a month. So. And that that's pretty correct that this entire agreement will stand and that is why I'm moving or by feet and that is why I also want to stop paying. All right, sir. And I, I note that and I ask you to give me, you know, tell me how you were scammed. And I think you just said because the 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 contract said something about California law. Well the contract is under California law. I was under the interpretation that the contract was under Michigan law and that he was in compliance with Michigan law in actually you know right and he's not in compliance with michigan law when it comes to the certificate of compliance but the city ordinance also requires you to do some things and i've asked you several times if you paid rent into escrow and you're not responding and um the plaintiff has indicated that he you did not tell him that you were paying rent into escrow and so for you to assert this defense you there are some um conditions that you must ab abide by as well in order to uh, assert that defense and so i am issuing the judgment um i'm going to um do a judgment by hearing Sir, you have 10 days to either pay the $1,490 or vacate the premises. Oh, fantastic. I thought she was going to bang him out on insufficient service, which she really shouldn't because he's there. Everybody's there, and we, and we have jurisdiction, and we have the parties. If you do not either pay $1,490 or move out, 
by August 4th, 2023, the plaintiff can come to court and ask for an eviction writ. Once the court signs off on the eviction writ, that gives the plaintiff the authority to send a bailiff out to the property with the dumpster to set your personal belongings into the street. Okay. In order to avoid that, you need to pay the amount stated on the record, the $1,490 or move by August 4th. That is the judgment of this court. So you have until August 4th to appeal this judgment. Do you have a judgment, a proposed judgment, Mr. Sarofsky? No, I'm not. I didn't hear the last part. Oh, behind it there. oh, no, I said, do you have a proposed judgment? Do you have the actual document? That, because I issued the judgment, but you have to bring me the judgment to sign off on. Wait, oh, no, no, no. Okay, so you can get that from the second floor. If you can go get it and bring it back within the next <laughs> at least 15 minutes, then I will sign off on it. Oh, this just hurts. That, that, it's a form order, but he doesn't know what to do. He's not stupid, but he doesn't know what he needs to put on it. Uh, this, this just makes me cringe today so you can either wait on mr sarowski to bring the judgment back for me to sign off on it or you can receive it in the mail that's the judgment of the court you have 10 days to appeal that concludes this matter thank you yeah, you sure can well i wanted to put it in the file you don't want it to be in the court file all right well i only have one copy but i'll give it back to you if that's what you're requesting Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Six eight nine nine two. Yeah. Um, without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved that people were uh, giving to me that uh, ended up being glue. Like I smoked some glue and stuff. I thought I was smoking crack. And wow. Well, there you have it. There you have it. That was that was a wild one. That was a wild one. Uh, all right. So I asked the question in the title, and I have I still haven't decided which which subset was worse, Featherhead or, or uh, Kung Fu subset. <laughs> that is just downright creepy. Thank you again so much. I I, I didn't see that. Although, all right, from Mexico, but it's in U.S. dollars. And a lot. Thank you very much. Very generous. Who wins? Tell me in the chat. Featherhead or Kung Fu? <laughs> By the way, I know I'll get a bunch of woke mobsters coming at me for saying that. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> the uh the kung fu master is not asian and featherhead is not native okay <laughs> so talk to them about it not me i i didn't start this i didn't start this oh good lord that that was that was crazy stuff natalie d sent me a really good one too but it, I, I i gotta review that one it, it's it's a little hot it's a little hot. It needs some editing. There, there, I, I'm not sure. If, I'm not, it, it appears that there might be some things in the, in there that I don't want, but it, it also has, and I'll, I'll quote her message to me, a pregnant woman twerking at a homeless shelter. Now, that sounds like a law talk with Mike kind of video. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Wait, where do we go? Both? Both crazy. F Featherhead? Featherheads? I think... <laughs> I think Featherhead's going to take it by a nose here. Kung Fu Subset does get votes, though. I mean, there, a good argument can be made either way. A good argument can be made either way. All right. Thank you all for coming out. That was that was wild. Thanks again, and big uh, big shout out to people in court and to Tommy V. Links to both of those videos and their channels in the description below. I will see you all soon.